What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Submans Comics, and we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. We got a great list this week, don't we, Jack? Absolutely. And unlike those other top 10 lists, we're not talking about things that have already happened in the hobby. We're not going to talk to you about books that have spiked last week, and that's why we're talking about them now. We're looking forward. We're showing you books that have the opportunity to spike in the future. And I guarantee you there are some books on this list that there isn't another soul talking about right now on YouTube. So, Brian, I'm excited. Let's get into it. That's right. Starting with number 10. Coming at the bottom of the list this week, we get Naomi number one. Yes, this one did take off for a little bit, but it's certainly down in that down cycle, that speculation cycle we always talk about. We know this character's lying there. We know they have plans for what else do we know about this one, Jack? Yeah, you know, this is one of those ones, Brian, where everybody can save me that negative talk because, yeah, it's down, and, yeah, people can say the hype was artificial, but there wasn't any artificial hype about it because the thing that you mentioned that we know is the fact that this character is the flagship character created by Brian Michael Bendis, who a uh, fortune was paid to bring into DC. We already see the fact that DC has already changed their leadership. Brian Michael Bendis is in a really prime power position at DC Comics. This is his baby. This is a character that was unveiled on the Seth Meyers show. You're talking about one of the most popular late night television talk shows. Uh, this is a, a character that really penetrated not just the comic market, but mainstream media market as you know, this comic book that went to $50, $60 raw for a brand new issue number one. It's also kind of a perfect storm because it's, it's a book where it's a first appearance. She's on the cover. There's no cameo. There's nothing messy about this. And it's one of those like unique, organic first appearances. So, yeah, it's down, but that's why we like it. This, there is so much buying opportunity in this because you can already see where the demand was for this book just based on initial hype. Can you imagine if she shows up in a TV show or a movie? And I just got to feel like, and we've been saying it, and I'm on record, I'm going to live and die by this. If that is going to happen eventually, it's too much money was put into this character. They are going to do something big. And don't forget, San Diego Comic-Con last year, what was the big book DC was passing out to everybody? That black and white convention edition of this book. So this is the book for DC for 2019. And I think the time to buy it is in 2020 when people have forgotten. Heading us next on the list this week, we get Iron Man number 128. A lot of people wear this. It's been played out somewhat in the MCU, but wasn't really highlighted. But we're talking about Iron Man number 128, that demon in the bottle iconic issue. Yeah, Disney didn't want to fully go down this road. And I understand that, right? All ages, you know, they, they didn't want to bring in this depressive side of Tony Stark. And they definitely touched on it a bit. But this really gives you the idea. And if you've ever been exposed to alcoholism, you see the, you know, the depths that it can bring a person to. But this issue was iconic. It, it, it was absolutely classic. It's received some attention recently. Um, I don't really know why, but it, it, you know, it, sh it showed up in, in some of those hot lists that we talked about before, which is tough. When we've talked about this before. We make these lists weeks in advance. So this was a planned book that we want to talk about. And the reason why is because it fits a trend that is featured right now in our 100 back issues to collect uh, ebook that's available right now on simplelenscomics.com for $1.95 that gives you the first 10 lists with a whole bunch of added information. And one of those pieces of information is talking about the trend of classic is classic. Brian and I have a belief that comics are going to be eternal, that people are always going to collect, and that the books that were important and iconic in the early days, no matter how much people going to get on a trend for first appearances, no matter how much people are trying to speculate on the next MCU property, these classic issues are always going to be important. And because of that, this book is forever going to be a blue chip and it will only rise in value over time. Maybe slow, but it'll definitely rise. And that type of diversification is important, not just for your investing portfolio, but your collection as well. Hitting us at the number eight spot this week, we get some classic McFarlane goodness with Incredible Hulk number 340. This is a great cover. It's been swiped multiple times, but always one to add to your collection right yeah and if it's in two trends one that we talked about in the previous ebook that i just spoke of the fact that classic is classic you know it's not a book that you can tie to any major appearance or um, a book that's going to pay off because of something that happens in tv or movie even if there was like a one second moment where what happens on this cover you were to have happened in a movie i don't know that that would be enough to spike this book 
but that doesn't matter because classic is classic and this will forever be a blue chip. But it also fits into another trend that you're going to hear us talk about more and more on these upcoming lists, as well as will be featured in volume two of 100 comic books to collect. But we are going to talk about the fact that iconic cover art, iconic imaging. This is iconic cover art. This t- really spelled what Todd McFarlane was during this era. It, it is immediately recognizable to people. Even if nothing happens in this issue, right? Even if there was nothing in this issue that made this book iconic, the cover art alone is what made people pay attention to this. And this book and this cover will be reproduced in products that you'll see at your local Hobby Lobby, um, your local Michaels, and things like that forever. And because of that, this book is a blue chip and one you should be paying attention to. It is one of those books that people think they got a great price on it and turns out they just bought a magnet on eBay. Yes. Next one on the list. This one, we, we talk about twofers. We talk about trifecta. I guess we call this one the octo pick. And we're talking about Batman White Knight. We're talking about issues one through eight. Yeah, I could have picked right the specific issues. I could have said number one and then touched on Neo Joker. But here's the reality. Here's what this pick is all about. If it's another trend that we're going to talk about going forward, which is miniseries. The fact that miniseries often get overlooked and then spike out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, you're looking back and you're like, it's not available. Why is that? Well, oftentimes that's because when a series first comes out, it's a new release, it's accessible. And then over time, you just can't find those back issues. And this is one of those series. If you buy it as a set, it's actually kind of affordable, less than $10 a book. If you try to piece this together individually, it'll cost you a fortune. And either way, we know some things about Sean Murphy and this, this White Knight. Number one, he got another volume of it. Number two, we now know that DC is going to give him his own little universe, his own imprint. We've heard talk about animated features in the future, as well as Sean Murphy being rumored to be talked about to possibly do something with his universe a la what Todd Phillips did with the Joker. So those kind of potentials for film or animated features make me believe that no matter how much uh, attention and heat has gotten on this series already, it's really only been because of reader buzz, Brian. You factor in those other two factors, that tells me that this series is due for another spike. It's time to get in on this one now. This is a series that I've referred to as Black Label before Black Label existed. Mm-hmm. It was like that in between. It wasn't quite Vertigo, but it, it, it would have fit in Black Label had it existed at the time. But this is a great mini series, And yeah, no doubt, one that I'm glad that I picked up, pre-ordered those, and have them in my collection. And also, be on the lookout for the late printings for a lot of these issues. There's a lot of late printings, cover art changes, slight changes, some coloring changes. Some are really limited. Um, so I would pay attention to that. Hitting us at the middle spot on the list at number six this week, we get Oblivion Song number one. Yeah, a lot of people say, we've heard this argument a lot, there's a, there's a pretty big print run out there, but it's a great one to pick up, great one to have in your collection, because we haven't even seen the potential hit yet with that whole Robert Kirkman Amazon going on. Right, so this is one that I expect to catch the flack, like, oh my God, there's a million of these, they overprinted it, yeah, they did, they did, they definitely printed more than was needed. The supply outweighed the demand. But there's a reason for this. Robert Kirkman knew from the get-go that this was a different type of property. We've already heard name like Sandra Bullock attached to this property. We've already heard the fact that it's been optioned by Amazon. We've seen what an Amazon option has the potential to be, something that I was down on about a year ago on the channel. But with the boys, it's kind of opened everybody's eyes to the fact that, well, you know what? If Amazon does get a show that gets that kind of discussion and buzz, people will get on board and watch it. So because of that, and because of the success Robert Kirkman's had on The Walking Dead, and the importance of the fact to remember that while The Walking Dead had solid reader buzz, it didn't see the type of demand for the comic book that it did until it hit the television screen. So my belief with this series, and if you've ever read Oblivion Song, I know that you'll be on board. This thing was made to be cinematic. This thing was made to be a television show. Uh, This is one that I feel like is going to be a smash success. And all of those negatives that you can give me are why this book is so cheap right now. And I don't care that 100,000 of this book were printed. You have to realize if a television show is big enough that 20, 30, 40, 50 million people watch it, 100,000 is going to seem small in comparison. When you're talking about a book you can buy for cover price, 
why not? You know, I'd be remiss not to mention to be on the lookout for those uh, pink signatures, but I think people get too focused on those. To be honest with you, my buy suggestion is look for lots of cover A. A lot of times you'll find people putting 10, 20, even 50 cover A's together without the pink signature, and you can get them as low as 2 or $3 each. I love that buy. Yeah, and I would never brush off Amazon, especially when it comes to Jeff Bezos, because when they have their own Prime video, but you never know what that old Bezos cash can acquire down the road. They might catch some media company, company limping around, and then you, the next thing you know, they've acquired it, and they've just grown their media right. twofold. Right, yeah, he's got, he's got a trillion uh, arrows in his, uh, in his bag, for sure. Coming at that number five spot, this is one that definitely took off, especially when the movie was getting ready to come out. Talking about classic Black Panther, volume one, number one. Yeah, and again, this is hitting those trends. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, about trends, again, I implore you to hit up simplementscomics.com. Go ahead and look right in that right-hand side. You're going to see that link for that ebook, $1.95. And we spell these trends out for you, but this is hitting on the trend of the fact that certain key issues are just getting too expensive for the new comic collector entering the market. If you're a young kid and you grew up and Black Panther is a whole different character to you than it was growing up for us. Because to us, he was a character that was really a BC level character and that maybe even putting it nicely. But to the kids today, with the fact that the feature film was one of the most successful, if not arguably the most successful of any of the MCU standalones, it's one of those things where this character is going to become increasingly more and more important. Not to mention all the race uh, aspects of the fact that inclusion being so important, representation being so important, and what this does as far as opening up our nerd culture to what we already know exists, which is a diverse fan base that exists out there. Any viewing of a Comic Con floor will quickly show you that in 2020. So Black Panther is here to stay. I think it's a property that I, I can't be more bullish about. And most people are very bullish about it. But one of the areas where I feel like there's still ROI left to be had is based on this trend that people are starting to migrate towards these next best issues, but they're not there all the way. And this is a prime example. This is a book that as Fantastic 452 gets more and more ridiculous is one that has room to grow. It's also Jack Kirby cover art. So you really can't beat that. That's just an added value because you're getting the king on the cover. He's iconic. This is a Black Panther number one, the very first one. This is definitely a book I feel like everybody needs to own in their PC, but it's one I think can show you ROI over time if you're willing to play the long game. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the trend of first appearances getting out of reach, but there's also that trend of first self-titled series, yeah. and this hits that trend as well. Reaching us just outside the top three this week at number four, we get the IDW G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 226. Yeah, now this is an issue that helped me be able to see what was coming with Jenica Turtle. And I know that you, you may hear that and go, these don't seem related at all. But this is the same thing. I, I'm pretty confident that you all viewing out there in the Simplements Comics YouTube family, you remember what that Jenica Turtle heat was. And we covered it previously in a previous top 10 list, talking about TMNT 51 as well as TMNT 95. But it was one of those things where this is a first appearance of Don Moreno a Hispanic killer on a next level, starts working for Cobra, uh, similar to Jenica working for the foot, um, and then eventually is kind of turned to the side of the Joe, takes the mantle of the new Snake Eyes later on in the run. This is her first appearance in comics, and this book sold out instantly, was gone. This is a regularly a $20 to $25 book, and one I don't think a lot of people realize, but this is a book I find, Brian, still to this day, at LCS's for cover price because people just are not aware that this book and this character are as popular as they are. She's the current Snake Eyes today in comics. And in, another cool thing about her is the original Snake Eyes, the one who debuts in issue one, who we're going to see a solo film about, when he dies, his consciousness is now inside her. So she's almost co-opted by him. So the importance of Don Moreno cannot be undersold. Plus, again, it hits that, that kind of diversity uh, angle that, that definitely, definitely gets people's attention. And plus, it's a female character, not just a female character, like you mentioned, Brian, a female badass. And we know what that can do on the market. This is one to be on the lookout for and one you may not have been aware of. 
Next on the list at number three, we get a two for, and we're also sticking with that G.I. Joe series. And this one, we're talking about issues number 244 and 245. Not only are we sticking with that G.I. Joe series, Brian, we're sticking with Dawn Moreno because I mentioned she becomes Snake Eyes and this is where it happens. Now, you can argue between 244 and 245. Different online resources are going to list different issues and I'll even see some that list 246. Now, I don't play into that 246 game. 244, for those of you who have actually read the series, she kind of gets her costume. She essentially becomes Snake Eyes, but her costume isn't the final form of her costume. It is basically just her ninja gi, uh, similar to like an old school Snake Eyes look. Uh, and she, they don't name her as Snake Eyes, but she is Snake Eyes. There is already an existing Snake Eyes at that time with Sean Collins as well. In the next issue, in 245, she takes the mantle as the official Snake Eyes. She's given that title and she gets a new costume that's unique to her, which is the one we see today with the pink accents and whatnot. So and that's been the, the character design that's been extremely important. So which one do I think is, is, is more important? I don't know. Uh, I, I feel like she becomes Snake Eyes in 244, but I also get people that, that say, well, yeah, but that's not really the character that she ultimately becomes and it's not named till 245. And our strategy on the channel has been grab them both when there's this kind of a debate. But these are another two issues that are under the radar. They do sell well on eBay. That is not the place you want to be buying them from. But if you look around, you can buy these all kinds of places. I personally bought 25 copies at one point off IDW's website of this book a couple of years ago, well after it had spiked to $20 on eBay. So one of those things, this is a book that just gets overlooked. We are now at the number two spot. And coming in on the list this week, we have Edge of Spider-Verse number two, but we're talking about those later printings. This is one of the ones that bucks our trend where we're like, we hate the color change, but these are definitely getting noticed. And it also has that design variant in the later printings as well, right? Right, and that design variant has spiked and shown up on some of those top 10 lists this week. It's hitting about $70 on the secondary market. The reason why I'm still okay talking about it is the fact that I don't know anybody, and I don't like to take credit like this too often, but I don't know anybody who's talked about this book longer than me. I was talking about the design variant before it hit FOC. Edge of the Spider-Verse is a book that I've been intimately familiar with. It was created by some dudes in Charlotte. I was at the very first signing for Edge of the Spider-Verse number two back before anybody realized it was going to be a big book. We were grabbing them for cover price off the shelf. When I saw that that design variant was coming in, I know my Simpleman's Comics family knows my feeling on the color changes. I said, well, this is going to be the one true variant for this book other than the very expensive Greg Land variant. And because of that, it's seen price increases. But that's not really what this pick is all about, Brian. You know, we heard Kevin Fields say it on the podcast that we had a week ago, um, and I totally concur. But you see what's happening with Miles Morales. Miles Morales has ascended from next generation star to legit A-list superstar character that you can compare to any A-list character. Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider, Gwen Stacy, she is on that road. We've seen her show up in the animated. We've seen the popularity. We've seen the, the merchandising that went with it. It's only a matter of time we see live action. We see the way uh, a, a costume design in a live action movie spiked the secondary market sales of her books. There is a very limited window for that second print, that fourth print, that fifth print for this book featuring you know like the orange cover the blue cover um i think there's a uh 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 it might be yellow but it, there's a limited time where these books are going to be affordable and when i say affordable they're not cheap maybe 20 might be 30 dollars but there's a very limited time before you're gonna while you're gonna be able to grab these books and pretty soon when again the same way we talk about other books when into the spider when edge of the spider verse number two the first print becomes a $500 book, which I feel like it's inevitable it will hit one day because it's far lower printed than several other first, pr first appearances of its caliber. Um, these later printings have the possibility of being $100 books across the board. So grab them now and feel confident that this is one you're going to want to stick in your short box, in your long box, and hold. Because the future for Spider-Gwen is bright no matter what's going on with the current digital first publishing side. 
It's funny because you cross, you talk about that design variant. I remember when it came out, I picked it up thinking it was going to be like uh, Flipper's Gold. And yeah. it didn't, it didn't spike right away. It stacked no. it right around that like nine to $10. And because everyone thought that. And I remember people giving me shit because I was back in the old message board days. I was really advocating the book. And I remember people really giving me a hard time that, you know, it didn't turn out, but I knew that if, as long as this character was popular, this cover was going to be popular. And sure enough, that design variant has dried up. Yeah, because I remember picking it up at Third Eye, and I was like, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'll be able to flip this. That was back when I was like trying to Wednesday Warrior all the time. And I was like, well, I'm just going to hold on to this. I'm glad I did now. But Yeah, that was my first very major pre-order, first triple-digit numbered pre-order. Yeah, I bought one copy. <laughs> Hitting us at the top spot this week, we are talking about Rhodey Rhodes and his first appearance himself in Iron Man number 118. Yeah, and you know, this is a book, it's kind of a classic, right? It's, you're talking about a classic character, but often overlooked, rarely talked about. Um, now, certainly, you can make the argument, well, his first appearance as War Machine is more important. See, sort of, but he's also been Iron Patriot. Um, oftentimes, and this is important to me, when we see him in the MCU, he's not referred to as War Machine. No. It's, you know, it's, it's come, come on, Hulk, come on, Thor, come on, Rhodey. And, and that is important because how he is referred to is how he's going to be viewed by the future generations of comic buying fans. So because of that, I kind of like to buck that typical trend of going character over person and go with the personal first appearance here with this issue number 118. If you look at the amount of screen time that James Rhodes has gotten in the MCU, and then you compare it to his first appearance compared to everybody else's, it's insane. Plus, unlike many other of those Generation 1 MCU characters, he re-signed a new deal, he being Don Cheadle. So we're going to see Don Cheadle more, whether it's Disney Plus or in the MCU. And because of this, I feel like, again, we're going to introduce generations of people to this character. This character is going to be important and iconic no matter how many iterations of avengers we have he was part of that original team and because of that i just think that this is a first appearance that is just sorely undervalued and so for that reason it's the number one book on the list this week you can't go wrong with this classic and i think if you do a little research you're gonna be surprised how cheap this book really is yeah, to me, he reminds me of where he is right now. He was like how Greg Clark or Agent Coulson was at the beginning of the MCU or Rosario Dawson's character in, in the Netflix, kind of like that character that can kind of weave between a bunch of these properties and these TV shows to kind of pull them all together. And that's how I see Don Cheadle as Rhodey Rhodes doing that. We'll, we'll wait and see how it does. But either way, Don Cheadle plays a great Rhodey Rhodes. And yeah, I picked this book up like right around Iron Man 2. Some of the funniest, uh, some of the funniest one-liners in Endgame that you'll see if you go back and watch that movie again. Some of the funniest one-liners come from Don Cheadle, especially the dinner party. Yeah, that was Ultron, though. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. So there it is, guys. Those are our top ten back issues to be on the lookout for this week. We say this week, but we always just mean about this video. These. All these picks can be put to that master list. We always like to say, create that master list. These books can always be looking for because we always think they're value to add to your collection. And if you want to see this full list also, you can see it over at supermanscomics.com. We have a little bit more information about each pick for you, as well as links for you to find available copies out on eBay. This has been Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. I get to it first, I got you back. I get that when I get to it last. Get it down, never going back. Get it down, never going back. I got you bad. I guess I'm gonna get to it last. Get it down.